to not only use our ears but to use our hearts and to use our spirits Brother Hudspeth Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. There's still power in the tower. There's still power in that name. Do you believe that? Can we thank him for that? We give you praise and honor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What an honor it is to be in St. Petersburg, Florida the Life Center. Amen. Such wonderful people and what a blessing to have our tour guide yesterday, the Smith family, showing us this wonderful city, taking us to the pier. It was a quite a blessing. Sister Michelle, who has been in contact with us for several weeks for this wonderful day. And uh, we do appreciate the hospitality and the love that we have felt as we met with the board yesterday and also the leadership of this Wonderful church. Thank you for your time. And uh, we've tried our best to answer all your questions. But uh, we appreciate it very much for this opportunity and the love that we do feel in this place. Praise God. I know that you've had great leadership in the past, great pastors um, up to this point. And uh, I do believe without a shadow of a doubt that there's greater things to be done in this city. Does anybody believe that? Praise God. Greater things are yet to be done in this this city. Obviously, as a pastor coming into this situation, I do sense a, a hurt and a grieving process in the passing of your former pastor, Brother Silstrunk. And I do want to give him honor. I did not know this great man of faith, but I know that he was a great man and he led this church to great heights. So I do honor him this morning. And I encourage you to keep trusting in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and lean not into your own understanding. Amen. He is there for you. So, Sister Joy, my wife, you're on the front row. We do not take this opportunity lightly. It is an honor. Amen. Overwhelming to think that you would be considering us, amen, to pastor this great church. So thank you so much for allowing us to come. We do have three beautiful children. Uh, Jordan is 18 years old. Our oldest son, he attends Gateway College of Evangelism there in St. Louis, Missouri, where we do reside and pastor at the present time. We have another son that is 13 years old. His name is Landon. And we have a beautiful daughter by the name of Ashton. So we are so sorry that they couldn't come with us, but due to a school and the timing, they stayed home. But we do miss them. But that is our family. I wish I had a picture to put on the screen. I should have thought of that. But I do have a picture on my phone if you just want to see them. But we're so blessed to have them in our lives. Praise God. I told my wife that she could maybe testify tonight. She said that she would bow out this morning. But she's right here on the front. Amen. Sitting by Sister Wilkerson. So I'm a, I'm so thankful that she's with me. And uh, we just want the will of God to be done for this church. And uh, have faith that great things are about to happen. Could we just praise the Lord and thank Him? Amen. For this beautiful day, for this beautiful spirit in this place, Lord, we love you and praise you. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. If you will turn, even if you have your Bible with you or if you just look at the screen, amen, don't know what you're accustomed to, but Second Chronicles chapter 20, there is a fascinating story that I want to touch on this morning. And it has to do with the power of praise. Amen. The power of praise is a wonderful thing. And it's something that uh, I have done in my life. And it's just uh, amazing to read this story and to understand how that God works through our praise. Amen. So I'm going to skip around a little bit here. I know that you've been standing for a long time, but just for a few minutes. Amen. Let's build a foundation. Let's look at the story and allow God to speak to us. There was an invasion that was coming into Judah at this present time. The Ammonites and the Moabites were coming, verse 1, verse 2. 
And uh, King Jehoshaphat, verse 3, he says, it says that he feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask the help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Skipping down to verse 15, and he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Praise God. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah. And Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head, verse 18, with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites, the children of the Kohathites, and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Praise God. It takes some noise to praise the Lord. If they did it in the Old Testament and the New Testament, this dispensation of grace, there is power in our praise. Amen. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Praise God. There is power in our praise. Verse 26, And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Barachah, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the valley of Barachah unto this day. Then they returned every man of Jehoshaphat, or excuse me, Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Praise God. They came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. Has anybody found the rest of the Lord? He will bring you to a place. He will give you the rest wherein the weary do find rest. Amen? I want to preach to you this morning about the power of praise. The power of praise. Could we do that right now? Thank you, Lord, for the praise that has gone up this morning in this sanctuary at the Life Center, Lord. We honor you once again on this Sunday morning. Lord, we want to praise you, Lord. We want to trust you to understand, Lord, that when we lift our hands, that there is power, that there is something in the spiritual realm that happens when we praise your wonderful name. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, praise the Lord. Praise God. You can be seated this morning. The King Jehoshaphat, Jerusalem, and Judah, there was a huge dilemma that they were facing at this time of their lives. A great multitude, according to verse 2, said that from beyond the sea, the crusaders, they were not coming to just to introduce themselves and to share their love and to hug their fellow brethren. Amen. They were not coming to pass out candy to the children. But these men, these murdering men, were looking to slay and to destroy. It was bloodshed that was on their mind. And it was a bunch of men that were coming with destruction and evil against Judah and Jerusalem. And so this, this moment, the Bible says that the king, number one, there was great fear in his heart. Has anybody ever been overwhelmed with fear in your life? 
fear that comes against you as a family, as an individual. The king was at that point. It says that Jehoshaphat feared. I love his reaction to the threat of the enemy. He feared, yet it says that he set himself. He set himself to seek the Lord. The reaction of the king was to fast. It was to gather the people. There was no United Nations to call and say, you know what, this is not fair. I, it looks like we're going to need some help from some of the other powers of this world. It was not possible at that time. It was a moment, I'm reminded, excuse the, the comparison today to a secular song, but in the 80s, back, back in the 80s, there was a song that says, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Anybody remember that old song? I remember it at school. They would say it, they would sing it, and you would answer Ghostbusters. But the cry was there, who are you going to call? Who are you going to go to, King, in a time like this when there is fear and, and we feel overwhelmed? I'm amazed and it's awesome that this king feared, yet he set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Praise God. There was a statement of unity as this people, as they came together to praise the Lord. In a spirit of unity, they came. From all over they came, from Clearwater to Hillsborough, from Tampa Bay, from St. Petersburg. Here they came, and they had one intention, that was to pray and to seek the Lord and, and to lift their hands and to say, Lord, I know that we feel overwhelmed and, and there's great fear in our midst, but we're going to lift our hands and we're going to praise you, Lord. Praise God. They heard the sounds of the chariots and the clanking of metal and the swords and and the sentry, no doubt, he saw them. And it could be related to the story of history that we have in America. The British are coming. The British are coming. The Paul Revere of that time, he sensed that he saw it. He heard them. He raced back to the king. He shared the message. There was great fear. But the reaction was from the people, we are going to bow down before our God. And we are going to pray in the house of the Lord. So here they came, and I don't believe they concerned themselves about the cost of gasoline. I don't believe that they were worried about the wear and tear upon their sandals or the chariots and the wheels. They came to the house of the Lord, amen, to praise Him, to seek the Lord in a moment of fear. Feeling overwhelmed, there was a moment in their lives that they found themselves together. Seeking the face of God Almighty. Praise God. They made the effort to leave their homes and to find the house of prayer. Let me just say this morning that if the enemy can keep you from coming to the house of the Lord, if, if somehow there is a distraction that can come to keep you from lifting your hands in the house of the Lord, in a place of unity, amen, the enemy has you right where he wants you. But if you will make up in your mind, I'm coming to the house of the Lord to do one thing, and that is to lift my hands and to praise Him in spite of sin circumstances. God, I know that you've given me dominion over the enemy in my life. Somebody praise him this morning. Somebody praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. There's something about praise. There's something about lifting your hands and worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. There's something about a praise team that says, I've come to praise the Lord. I've come to play the guitar. I've come to play the drums and the cymbals. There's something about praise in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I love the reaction of the king, Jehoshaphat. If you read this story, he started remembering and he started reflecting. Aren't you the God that delivered us in the past? Aren't you the God that healed, that delivered? Aren't you the God, verse 9, when evil cometh upon us as the sword and judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. We have cried out to you, Lord, in affliction before. Aren't you the same God of yesteryear and yesterday who did drive out the inhabitants? In other words, God, you've been faithful to me. 
I believe it's important as a church and as individuals that we, we remember and we reflect what God has done in our lives. I believe it's important in the midst of a trial and as you walk through a valley that you just stop for just a moment. And you stop remembering, God, you have been good to me. Lord, I don't ever want to forget the blessings that you poured out upon my children and my family and the house of God where the saints are. Amen. Why don't we do that right now? Can we just remember and reflect, God, you've been good to me. Lord, you have blessed me. You have protected me, God. You have healed my body. We remember and we reflect at your people here this morning, oh God. Praise God. I encourage you this morning to don't run and hide in a corner. To not give up. To not feel hopeless and defeated. Can I encourage somebody this morning to quit wringing your hands? Sometimes we do that. We... We get nervous and there's apprehension and it's, there's fear, God. Brother Kevin, what am I going to do? I, I've got a situation in my life and I'm nervous about it. And Well, I'm just wringing my hands, spiritually speaking. Amen. At that moment, I want to encourage you to quit wringing your hands and get your hands in the air. Amen. It's time to get your praise on. It's time for you to stand up and say, God, in spite of the circumstances, I'm going to lift my hands. There may be fear. There may be apprehension, Lord, but I'm going to stand up and praise your wonderful name. Praise God. Praise God. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. When evil comes, we will pray. The king said to the God that delivers. When we praise the Lord, it provides perspective to face our problems Head on. When we praise the Lord, it restricts our carnal pride. There's power, church, in our praise. When we praise the Lord, it releases the power, the pathway, and the purpose of what He wants to do in His church. To say, praise the Lord, elder. It's more than just a generic phrase that I say before church and after church. To say praise the Lord is to exclaim from the bottom of my heart that there is power in a God that's never failed me, church. I encourage you this morning. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know you this morning, but I do know that there is a God that loves you. Amen. That will honor your request as you begin to praise Him in the beauty of holiness. The enemy is coming, King. What's the reaction that we're going to have? It was God, it's in your hands. I realize that there's power and there is might. That none were able to withstand you in the past. And I understand today that if I will lead your people, if I will just set myself, sometimes you just have to, to draw a line and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to set myself. I know that I've been hit in the mouth. I know I've got a bloody nose. Enemy, you've come into my life to destroy me. But you know what? This morning on a Sunday morning, I'm just, I'm just setting myself. And I'm, I'm lifting my hands. Amen. And this hand is an AK-47. And this hand is a 12-gauge shotgun. And this is all that I know to do this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Praise God. Praise God. The enemy sometimes breathes down our necks. The threats come against us as a family, as a church. And there are moments we are humanity. There are moments that all of us, we feel overwhelmed. Moments that we forget as we go through circumstances that it's God that has given me dominion. He's given me dominion over the devil and over sin and over circumstances and, and over self. There is power in our praise when we stand up and we exclaim, you know what, in spite of this valley that I'm going through. 
in spite of circumstances. Amen. It's worked in the past. I've heard stories about it. We're talking about it from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And this is my reaction on a Sunday morning. Lord, I'm just going to praise you. I don't know where the money's going to come from for rent or for food. I don't know what you're going to do about that person in my life that, that needs a healing, Lord. But in spite of it, Lord, here's my reaction to the enemy. I have come to church to pray. Praise the Lord. Can we do that right now? Hallelujah. I'm going to praise you this morning. I'm going to lift my voice and my heart to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. There are moments that I feel weak. I'm weary. I don't know about you, but on Wednesday nights, I, I see people struggling just to get their hands in the air. Hmm. It's been a hard day at work. Amen. There are distractions. There is weariness in our flesh. Sometimes it feels like our arms feel 100 pounds. Does anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? There are moments that we just don't feel like it. And, and there's weakness and there's circumstances. But there is something about getting your hands up. Amen? And to understand that if God delivered this wonderful group of people in Second Chronicles chapter 20, He can do it for us. I love this story and the scriptures that are here. How that they stood up. To praise the Lord, God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. There's something about our praise. Some may come into a Pentecostal service for the first time and, and may not understand all of the noise that's going on and all of the instruments. But I want to tell you this morning, it's of the Lord. Amen? It says to praise Him with a loud voice on high. He consulted with the people and appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for His mercy endureth forever. The Lord, God of Israel, He said, Fear not. Be not dismayed. The battle is not yours, but it's God's. Amen. There are battles that you will have in your life Battles where you feel weak and outnumbered and there is fear in your heart. I want you to remember this morning that the battle is not yours. It is God's. You are His children. You are His loved ones. Amen? He's not going to forsake you. He's not going to leave you in the dark. If you will just lift your hands this morning. If you'll just push your, side, your pride aside and just lift your hands and understand that the battle that I'm in right now, it's not mine. This is God's battle that will be won as I praise Him in the beauty of of holiness there is power in praise there is power there is power in praise praise god i love it king jehoshaphat he called for the children the bible says that he called for the children and for the people and for the little ones emma they came with their babies in their hands they came with the toddlers come on come on little joe we're going to the house of the lord Amen. The enemy's coming. We feel overwhelmed. There's fear. But you know what? You need to put everything down. Put your toys down. We're going to the house of the Lord. I don't care how old you are. Amen. It's important that we bring our children. Amen. It doesn't matter the age. If they're six months, if they're two years, they need to see people that know how to lift their hands. Amen. To praise the Lord. To praise the Lord. There is power in our praise. Praise God. Praise God. Ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's praise Him this morning. Can we do that? Fear not. Be not dismayed. The Lord is with you. When they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. 
It wasn't bazookas. It was not machine guns. It wasn't the greatest swords or spears. It was simply a group of people that knew how to lift their hands in the air. That understood, understood that if I can just get my praise on, amen, the Lord is going to ambush the enemy. The Bible says that they were smitten. There was confusion. They were confounded and they helped to destroy one another. In the midst of praise, in the midst of noise and, and voices and instruments of praise, the enemy was defeated. Praise God. Praise God. There's something about praising Him. Praise God. There's something about lifting up our hands when fear is in our midst. There's something about us lifting our hands and praising Him. The story goes on and says that in the valley of Barachal, amen, in the valley of Barachal, there was rejoicing and there was joy. The valley of Barachal simply means valley of blessings. And can I remind you this morning that many times before you get to that blessing and before you reach that area of victory, there's going to be moments in your life that you feel overwhelmed and there's going to be fear. There's going to be moments where the devil comes against you according to John 10 and 10, seeking to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I believe there's a church that understands if I can just get my hands in the air, amen, that if I can just praise the Lord, it doesn't matter the intentions, it doesn't matter the weapon that He uses against me. If I'm going to get my victory, I've just got to keep praising Him, amen. Let me encourage somebody here this morning and tell you you're almost there. You're almost to the valley of Barachal. It's time to kick the devil in the jaw in the valley of Barachal and to lift your hands and say, you know what? I know who I'm going to call in the valley of Barachal. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. Does anybody want to reach that moment of victory? Let's stand and worship and praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get your praise on. Woo! New Life Center. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just remain standing. I'm almost, almost done. If you look at the book of Psalms, it's filled with praise. But just a few to mention this morning. Psalms 106 begins with praise the Lord. And it ends with praise the Lord. Psalms 135, same thing. Praise the Lord. It ends with praise. Praise the Lord. Psalms 138, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Psalms 146, praise the Lord. Psalms 147 through Psalms 150, they begin with praise the Lord. Yes, yes, and they yes. end with praise the Lord. Let the beginning of your week on this Sunday morning, let it begin with praise the Lord. When you gather again at the end of this week, I want to encourage you to conclude it with praise and the Lord. Praising Him is the powerful response to battling the enemy in your valley. Everybody here today has a valley. But I want to encourage you. Amen. I want you to know that you can make it. The valley of Barachal, it's there. The blessings of the Lord. The victory, it's present. Moses, Exodus 17, as long as he lifted his hands... There was victory. Those hands started coming down. There was men that gathered around and said, My goodness, we got we've got to put some rocks on each side so those hands are kept in the air. If it worked for Moses, I want to tell you this morning, it will work for this church and life center. Amen. The blessings of the Lord. When the church praises Him, they become a center for the power of God to be released. I don't really know how to explain it but there's something in the spiritual realm that happens when a praise team assembles themselves and and the keyboard is starts praising the lord there's something that happens there's an ambushment that is set up in the spiritual realm where god comes on the scene and he gives us 
the victory. Praise God. So what's your response? Just another Sunday morning? Or is it? What is your reaction? Are you too tired? Are you too sick? Are you discouraged? Has depression wrapped you up this morning? I, I just encourage you to do one thing as we conclude this service. I just wonder if there's somebody here today that would like to join me at this altar. That would say, Lord, you know what? It's been another week. But Lord, in spite of circumstances, despite of the fear and the announcement that the enemy is breathing down my neck, Lord, I have come to praise the Lord. Enemy, you're not going to stop me from reaching my victory. I have come. I have set myself at this altar. I'm standing upon the rock, Christ Jesus, the chief cornerstone. Here's my response. Just kind of rub your toe in the carpet and say, I'm making a stand. Right here, devil. Here it is. Here's my reaction. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all you people. Oh, I know there's disappointments, Lord, in this life. But I've come to praise the Lord. Praise I Him. Praise, praise Him. I gotta praise on the drums. I got to praise. 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 Get your hands in the air. Get your pray. hands in the air. I gotta pray. Get your praise on. I'm gonna praise you, Lord. Pray. I'm gonna praise you, Lord. Woo! I want my victory. I want my blessings in the valley of Baratar. I, I will praise I you, Lord. I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. Yeah. Ain't no devil in hell stop me Cause when I pray, I got the victory The battle was won on Calvary So I will praise because he set me free oh, oh, oh. You don't know, like I know The things he's done to save my soul I'm a terrible world Jesus made me whole My Savior is worthy I will praise Him so oh, 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 oh. And I, I gotta praise I gotta praise And I gotta let it out I gotta praise oh, oh, oh. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise, oh, oh, oh. I, I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. Can't no devil in hell stop me, cause when I pray, I got the victory. The battle was won on Calvary, so I will praise because He set me free. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you don't know, like I know, the things He's done to save my soul. I'm a terrible world, this has made me whole. My Savior is worthy, I will praise Him so. Whoa, whoa. I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta let it out. I gotta praise. I'm 
we are praying that every high dog that is going to get the knowledge of the truth of God's word. Give God the praise in this way. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 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 Give God the praise. Come out with your hands up and surrender to God. Your victory is in the praise. He's already set an ambushment. You don't have to worry about that family member anymore. You pray low enough. Now begin to rejoice in what God has done. You don't have to worry about that, heal, that sickness no more. Begin to praise God for your healing. Don't worry about that situation no more. Begin to thank God for the deliverance. Come out with your hands up and praise God. Glory. Ah, uh, yes. There's power in praise. There's power in praise. That's your ambushment. Every time the devil thank you, you ought to, he got you, you ought to begin to give God some praise. You ought to begin to dance on that devil head. Every time he think he got you, lift up your hand. It may look funny to some people, but they don't know what you've been through. They don't know your story. They don't know your situation. They don't know what's going on. But when you begin to give God some praise, when you begin to lift up your hand and begin to rejoice in what God is doing, God smiles on you. Oh, what a powerful word. What a powerful word. There is power in praise. You need to get used to praising God here. Because when we get over there, that's what we're going to be doing all the time. We're going to be praising and magnifying the, the name that's above every name. So this is just a rehearsal. So I'm telling you right now, go ahead and get accustomed to giving God praise. Because that's what we do when we get to glory. We're going to be praising and magnifying his great name. It should be common for us to praise God. Wow. Wow. If you didn't know, now you know. 
See, God has already set the ambushment around every situation that's going on in your life. Now he's waiting to see if you're going to come out with your hand up in complete surrender. When you surrender all to God, it's already done for you. There's no weapon that's formed against you that will prosper. Every tongue that rose up in judgment is already condemned. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord. So instead of worrying about it, begin to be excited about how God is going to set you up above your enemy. Beautiful. Beautiful word. Maybe there's somebody here who don't know what complete victory is all about. Well, here's what it does mean. You don't have victory until you have submitted yourself completely to God's will. That means you've been baptized in his name. You've been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you haven't done so, today is a great day. We have water. We will baptize you in the name that's above every name. You have to understand that is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Salvation comes in the name of Jesus. If you want it, you can get it, and we want to see you with it because today is the day that you have an opportunity to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Come out with complete surrender and let God do what needs to be done. If there's somebody here who wants to be baptized in a name that transforms your life and make you a new creature, you can come today and we will baptize you in the wonderful name of Jesus. That's the name. It's all about him. This book that he preached from, this is a Jesus book. Old Testament is Jesus concealed. New Testament is Jesus revealed. But the bottom line is you need to be buried in that name. And if you haven't been buried in his name to have your sins remitted today, don't let the day pass you by. That promise is under you. Anybody want it, you can get it. Is there one? Is there one that want to be baptized? Glory! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If we can get some folks in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. This is why we do it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. This is why we do this. I'm 
Persecuted by a band that struck down but not destroyed. That's the only third for his promise, really, Lord. And he needs George will be my friend. Oh, the sorrow may lie like for a night. Lord knows me in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying down. Joy of the Lord, and I'm training my sickness, I'm training my sickness, I'm training my faith. I'm laying down the joy of the Lord, and all together we say yes to the Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes, 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 Lord, Come on, if you know Spanish, sing it with me. Cambiaré mi tristeza, cambiaré mi vergüenza, los entregaré por el gozo de Dios. Cambiaré mi dolor y mis enfermedad, los entregaré por el gozo de Dios. And all together we say sí, sí Señor, sí, sí Señor, sí Señor, sí, sí Señor, sí Señor, sí, sí Señor, amén. Sí Señor, sí, sí Señor. All right, declare it and say, I'm pressed. I'm pressed, but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. That his joy is going to be my strength. Those sorrows may last for a night. Joy comes in the morning. And somebody shout, Hallelujah! I'm trading my soul. I'm trading my soul. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, this shout with your voice. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, shout to the Lord, say yes, 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 Shout a little louder than before. I want to jump higher than before. I want to dance more freely than before. Because I'm freedom. 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 Because I'm freedom. Freedom. 
want to praise a little longer than before. I want to shout a little louder than before. I want to jump higher than before. I want to worship deeper than before. Because I'm free. shackles, no more chains, no, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Come on, if you've been set free, just let me lose. No more shackles, no more chains, no, no more bondage. I am free. Confessing your faith, your willingness to identify with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. I now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. He set me free, yeah, he set me free. He broke the bond, the prison for me. Oh, I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, he set me free, yeah, he set me free, yeah, he set me free. He broke the bond, the prison for me. Oh, I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, he set me free, yeah, he set me free, yeah, he set me free.
me free, yeah, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, he set me free, yeah, he set me free, yeah, he set me free. Michael Beard, upon the confession of your faith, your willingness to identify with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in his death, burial, resurrection, I now indeed baptize you in Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. We ought to give God some praise for his saving power, for his healing power. Jesus Christ is in this place, and he's doing awesome and wonderful things. We ought to give God a shout of praise in this place. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Any man being Christ, he is a new creature. Glory to God for new creatures in Jesus' name. Thank you. But that's not how the story ends. Come back tonight, we're going to do it again. In Jesus' name. Wow. There's power in praise. There is power in praise. So before Elder Puller comes to let, let us out in the name of Jesus, everybody just shout out with some ridiculous praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Elder Puller, if you will come dismiss us in Jesus' name. What a wonderful.